Did you know that despite their rudimentary technology, some ancient civilizations seem to know things about outer space that they technically shouldn't? Now, I'm not talking about aliens or anything supernatural. I'm talking about good old-fashioned observations and maybe a dash of intuition. But how much did they really know? Let's find out. The Mayans and Venus. Now, the Mayans were not just your average stargazers. These were people who took their celestial observations to a whole new level. Imagine you have no telescope, no calculus, and no modern physics, but you're tasked with understanding the mysteries of the cosmos. What do you do? Well, you do what the Mayans did. You watch, you learn, and you document. The Mayans had something called the Venus Tables, essentially, an ancient ephemeris focused solely on Venus. Found in the Dresden Codex, one of the oldest surviving books from the Americas, this tabulation meticulously tracked Venus's apparent movements. Here's the kicker. The Venus cycle, according to the Mayans, was 584 days long, which is eerily close to the modern value of about 583.92 days. This kind of precision is baffling, considering they didn't have modern tools or knowledge of celestial mechanics. The Mayans had several calendars, but the one that aligns with Venus is particularly fascinating. Called the Calendar Round, it was a 52-year period during which their 260-day religious calendar and the 365-day solar calendar would align. Why 52 years? Because it's close to a common multiple of Mars's and Venus's cycles, creating a window for both planets to appear in the sky simultaneously. They linked this to various events, natural phenomena, and ceremonies, making Venus a core part of their societal framework. For the Mayans, Venus wasn't just a bright object in the sky. It had a much deeper mythological meaning. It was associated with the god Kukulkan, or Quetzalcoatl in Aztec tradition, a feathered serpent deity. Venus's appearances and disappearances were thought to symbolize this god's terrestrial and celestial journeys. Its heliacal rising, where it first becomes visible in the dawn sky, was considered an important event, often associated with warfare, disruption, and change. The big question is, how did they manage to make such precise observations? Theories range from basic tools like horizon markers and simple alignments to complex wooden structures serving as makeshift observatories. They didn't have trigonometry or calculus. But what they did have was an extraordinary ability to observe patterns over time and pass down that knowledge generationally. The Sumerians. When it comes to pioneering civilizations, the Sumerians stand tall. Nestled in the cradle of civilization, modern-day southern Iraq, the Sumerians are credited with inventing one of the first forms of writing, complex urban planning and, get this, an understanding of the solar system that seems almost futuristic. Much like the Mayans, the Sumerians were keen observers of the night sky. However, in their clay tablets and seals, a particularly curious recurring image is found, a depiction of the solar system with specific planetary bodies, some of which would not be discovered until millennia later with the advent of the telescope. There's a significant debate about the exact interpretation of these tablets, but it's undeniably fascinating that these ancient people had such advanced astronomical insights. One of the most compelling pieces of evidence is a Sumerian seal, sometimes referred to as the Berlin Seal. On this seal, there's an image depicting what seems to be our sun at the center, surrounded by 11 other celestial bodies. Now, if you do the math, counting Earth and our moon, and then adding the five planets visible to the naked eye, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn, you end up with eight. This means there are still three mysterious celestial bodies. Could they have possibly known about Uranus, Neptune, or even the dwarf planet Pluto? Skeptics argue that this might be an abstract representation, but the question remains tantalizingly open. In the Sumerian Enuma Elish, or the Epic of Creation, there's a detailed description of a cosmic battle between gods, leading to the creation of Earth and its surrounding heavens. The narrative, which seems to resonate with modern theories of planetary formation, describes heavenly bodies colliding and merging. While it's easy to dismiss this as mere mythology, some wonder if it could be a poetic record of actual celestial events or knowledge. Delving deeper into Sumerian texts, there's a mention of Nibiru. Some believe it's a yet-to-be-discovered planet that has an elongated orbit, coming close to Earth every few millennia. Mainstream scientists generally dismiss this claim. Yet, the consistent mention of Nibiru in ancient texts makes it a subject of persistent intrigue. How did the Sumerians acquire such knowledge? 
While it's tempting to think of extraterrestrial teachers or lost advanced technologies, it's more likely that the Sumerians, much like the Mayans, were extraordinary pattern recognizers. They observed, recorded, and hypothesized, passing down knowledge over generations. This oral and written tradition, combined with their dedication to sky gazing, may have led to their surprisingly advanced understanding of the cosmos. Stonehenge, a monument that has puzzled and fascinated humanity for centuries. Situated on England's Salisbury Plain, this prehistoric ring of massive standing stones evokes a sense of awe and wonder. But what if I told you that this iconic structure was not just a testament to ancient engineering, but also to ancient astronomy? Many of us know of the summer solstice celebrations that occur at Stonehenge, where the sun, on the longest day of the year, rises directly above the heel stone and casts a beam of light directly into the center of the monument. But the intricacies go much deeper. Stonehenge aligns not just with the summer solstice, but also the winter solstice and the equinoxes. The placement of these stones isn't haphazard. They've been meticulously arranged to mark key solar and lunar events. Beyond the more noticeable alignments with solstices, many researchers suggest that Stonehenge could function as an advanced lunar calendar. The monument's 56 Aubrey holes, named after the 17th century antiquarian John Aubrey, may have been used to predict lunar eclipses. By moving markers around this circle, ancient astronomers could track the 18.61-year lunar cycle. To think that a civilization without computers or telescopes could devise such a method is truly staggering. Why did the ancient builders of Stonehenge dedicate so much effort to aligning it with celestial events? While the full answer is lost to time, the prevailing theory is that these alignments had spiritual or ceremonial significance. The movement of the sun and moon were deeply intertwined with the beliefs, rituals and agricultural practices of ancient peoples. Stonehenge may have served as a sacred space where these elements converged, acting as a bridge between the earth and the heavens. While we've unlocked many of Stonehenge's astronomical secrets, many questions remain. How did a society without modern tools or machinery transport and erect these massive stones? Were there specific rituals or ceremonies performed during celestial events? Did the people believe in celestial or solar deities, and was Stonehenge a temple dedicated to them? Tucked away in the cliffs of Mali, West Africa, the Dogon people have lived for centuries, preserving an oral tradition that possesses a peculiar element which has baffled scholars and stargazers alike. But what if I told you that this isolated tribe holds knowledge about one of the stars in our sky that they shouldn't, by conventional historical accounts, be aware of? Sirius, also known as the Dog Star, is the brightest star in our night sky and can easily be spotted with the naked eye. What's not visible without the aid of powerful telescopes, however, is Sirius B, a white dwarf star that orbits its brighter companion. Astonishingly, the Dogon have described and revered this invisible star, referring to it as Po Tolo for generations, long before modern astronomers had the technology to discover it in the 19th century. The depth of the Dogon's knowledge is truly staggering. They not only identified Sirius B's existence, but also its elliptical orbit, its immense density, and the fact that it takes 50 years to complete its orbit around Sirius. One has to wonder how did they acquire such detailed and accurate knowledge without any apparent advanced astronomical instruments. The primary source of this intriguing connection between the Dogon and Sirius B comes from anthropologists Marcel Griol and Germain Dieterlin in the 1930s and 1940s. However, their findings have stirred debates. Some skeptics suggest that the Dogon might have acquired this knowledge from modern visitors before the anthropologists' arrival. Others posit that Griol and Dieterlin might have influenced the Dogon stories inadvertently. Yet another fascinating theory lies in the realm of ancient alien hypotheses. Some believe that the Dogon could have been visited by extraterrestrial beings who shared this astronomical knowledge. While this theory might seem far-fetched to many, it's an avenue of thought that's exciting to consider. Regardless of the source of their knowledge, the Dogon's reverence for the stars mirrors that of many ancient civilizations. Their oral traditions, dances and rituals are deeply intertwined with the heavens. The Segui ceremony, a once-in-a-lifetime event for the Dogon, occurs every 60 years, approximating the orbit of Sirius B around its companion star, further solidifying the celestial connection. What if I told you that more than a thousand years before the invention of the modern computer, the ancient Greeks had designed a device with an intricate system of gears and mechanisms, all to decode the universe's complex dance. 
dive deep with me into the mystery of the Antikythera mechanism, an artifact that challenges our very perception of technological progress. The tale begins in 1901 off the coast of the tiny Greek island of Antikythera. Sponge divers navigating the Asia Mediterranean depths stumbled upon a shipwreck. Amidst ancient statues and treasures, they discovered a corroded lump of metal with inscriptions and gears. Initially overlooked, this lump would turn out to be one of the most important archaeological finds of the 20th century. The Antikythera mechanism, once cleaned and examined, revealed an intricate assembly of over 30 meshing bronze gears. Upon closer inspection, scientists and historians realized that this was no ordinary artifact. It was, in essence, an ancient analog computer. The device was designed to predict astronomical events, from the phases of the moon to solar and lunar eclipses, and even the Olympic Games dates. The precision and understanding required to create such a mechanism suggest a level of astronomical and engineering knowledge far beyond what was believed to be present in 150 to 100 BCE, the estimated period of its creation. Over the decades, with the aid of X-ray imaging and advanced computational reconstructions, researchers pieced together the puzzle of the mechanism's functionality. It had dials that indicated the position of the Sun, the Moon and, astonishingly, possibly the known planets of that time. A rotating black and silver ball showed the Moon's phases. Another dial, like a spiral with 223 divisions, matched the Saros cycle an eclipse prediction system that the Babylonians used and the Greeks might have adopted. The layers of complexity in this mechanism are often likened to a Swiss watch, showing the ancient Greeks tremendous foresight and expertise in their astronomical and mechanical pursuits. And as always, I hope you found these topics interesting. Thanks for watching.